Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode from Journal de Sylvie. Today is part three from the Nature Journaling series that we already started. So I'll be sharing with you um, the universal abbreviations and terminology that can help you to be more efficient and brief uh, while logging your comments or observations from nature. I got inspired with this when I came across those uh, waterproof pamphlets that I usually find in uh, libraries or in the visitor center of any national or state park. However, any information shared uh, from this pamphlet is still available online and for free if you don't have that option where you live. So um, the whole concept is based on a key legend, which is a letter that uh, indicates a certain meaning uh, that is important to use while describing a bird. So I will show you um, how I used this key legend um, in my nature journaling. So this is one of the latest examples where I was illustrating the uh, great white agret bird. And after I finished sketching and coloring, I just drew arrows from the different parts of the bird and used these abbreviations, WS for wingspan, L for length, F for features, which is a typical physical description of the bird, such as its color or shape, H for habitat, where do you commonly find that bird, if it's rivers, uh, swamps, or wetlands. Uh, after I finished, um, I felt this abbreviation system gave it a bit of a technical scientific effect. It also helped me to be um, brief and not have a super crowded uh, spread. Now, you can always have uh, those abbreviations printed uh, or added um, handwritten in the back of your journal as a reference in case you forget any of that. Um, and the same concept applies for any different um, item you are describing. Obviously, the key legend differs if you are describing flowers. Um, and I found it very interesting with the trees because with the trees in that pamphlet, I found a page with the uh, leaf shapes nomenclature. So it's, it's amazing how uh, sometimes uh, I didn't take notice of how different are the shape of, um, of the leaves, but um, they are and every single shape has its own uh, name. Also the leaf types and arrangement. Uh, and that helps you to appreciate more and add a bit of a technical value to your comments and observations uh, in your nature journal. And finally, of course, that applies to the wildlife. So with the wildlife, um, it depends uh, how close you are to the uh, species you're observing. Uh, if it's from far, through your binoculars, you will probably um, just describe it, which is F for features. Um, however, if you are in some sort of a school project, camping, slash expedition, and uh, you're taking your comments to a more scientific level, you can start to describe the droppings of that animal or maybe the signs that indicated its presence in that area. So um, there is also the conservation status abbreviations, which basically is describing uh, how endangered uh, is that species or bird from existence. And uh, that too can be added. I have it ready to be printed and I will glue it uh, at the back of this uh, card so I will always have it as a reference in my ready-to-go journal. Now moving on to additional accessories and stationery that I have in my utility pouch that uh, usually helps me to add some dimensions and highlight to my spreads. And I just want to make a quick disclaimer that if you have a pencil and a pen and a notebook you are so ready to go enjoy and start your nature journaling. Uh, so uh, the lack of any of uh, the following items from your utility pouch will by no means delay you or prevent you from enjoying and creating a very beautiful nature journal. Okay, so this is my utility pouch for nature journaling and um, I just put everything in this one for the purpose of showing you. I used to use this for international traveling and now I dedicated it only for internal road trips and state parks. So real quick, I'm, I'm gonna go through uh, the main items I have over here that are useful. So first of all, you need certain colors 
and that color I am not an expert in colors but I can tell you based on my nature journaling experience the most commonly uh, used ones any color that represent earth um, between beige and browns also make sure to have one green and blue and uh, between those three colors you already cover a lot of surfaces water surfaces soil landscapes uh, um, grass, sky, and everything. And um, then you can keep uh, two warmer colors that represent, you know, when you color uh, the birds or uh, flowers. So uh, this is from the water-based Tombow. As I mentioned, this is very commonly used, the 992. And an example of this, for some reason, every time I sketch, I find myself using this one. And you see this latest spread I have over here uh, when visiting the caves. Um, I use it to describe the internal structure of uh, that cavern. Of course, you can have uh, the pencil collection or a combination of both. I have also the gray and black, very commonly found in nature, and some nude earthly colors. And finally, I have over here this new... Um, uh, watercolor, I did not use it so I don't know how good it is, but I really liked the design and how compacted it is compared to uh, the amount of color. So first, as you can see, it's quite compacted and this is from the side view. It has a ring here that helps you to mount it over here and then you start opening from both sides multiple palettes that now you can have different shades of each color according to your preference and each palette is of course uh, logged at the bottom with a number of uh, colors and then in the middle it comes with the working surface to blend colors um, and then there is a space to carry one um, water brush however the set came with a total of three i thought that's a very promising design for um, nature journal where we are concerned about how much we are carrying in our backpack so um, i hope the quality is as good as the design now moving on uh, with the pencils and type of pen as i mentioned if you have a pencil ideally with an eraser to instantly uh, uh, you know modify your sketch and if you have any pen to write your comments you're ready to enjoy and start your nature journaling uh, also, um, extras now. I have this Tombow double-sided black and grey. Uh, black and grey happens to be also frequently um, found in nature. Any fine liner in case you want to reinforce your pencil sketch. I also realized that I use a lot the white um, Uni Bowl UM153. One example is when I was actually drawing that bird over here. Here you see. That was the only three uh, items I used. Okay, uh, what else I have in my pouch? So I always keep a blank uh, plastic box. I call it the collection or field samples, number one. Small stones samples. Collecting field samples can, if it's something small and you don't have that box, you can always uh, use, as I mentioned in part two, the back plastic pouch in your journal where I dedicate that place to collect anything from the field, such as a flower or a leaf. And inside that, there is also an additional plastic bag. Uh, obviously, uh, if you are not into sketching or you are sketching and printing like me, I carry my pocket printer and I that case I bought separately, where I keep it uh, safe, you know, from wet, being wet or something. The charger and an extra one or two papers. Uh, and now for measuring an extra tool. So I have this little leather pouch where I keep small extras to easily find them. It's very basic. You need to have a um, pen sharpener, obviously, because I use this type of pencils. Uh, if you want to have an extra glue, you never know. I also use a lot my compass. And um, there is a lot of situations where you feel like you want to draw a circle. And for that, you can also use this a little bit fancier uh, tool here that allows you to draw um, different uh, circles with different diameter range plus the 
holes of diameters over here. And um, for some reason, drawing circles in nature comes as well as frequent because sometimes you want to draw a circle and describe the uh, cycle of a certain planet, uh, plant um, throughout different seasons or the um, certain animal cycle uh, throughout the day. I mean, it, it can be handy. I keep two uh, washi tape samples if I want to, you know, tape uh, something. And I kept the, the samples with the earth green blue colors that I mentioned or any washi tape you have relevant to the theme of uh, nature over here. I think that's it from my pouch. Of course, always have any measurement tool, a ruler. Um, I have this one scratched, a small magnifying uh, glass. Uh, what else I have here? I keep th this sometimes with me in case I want to pick anything that I don't want to necessarily touch with my hand. Um, an eraser. Uh, extra measurement tool because remember describing nature uh, is highly related to uh, taking dimensions. Um, anything else in my pouch is probably just for the sake of decoration. I collect pins from different state parks as a souvenir and um, in the back I keep uh, extra pouches for uh, collecting samples again. And for those two little notebooks I have here, this one I found, this is not really a technical tool, this is 100% aesthetics. I found a passport that states um, or lists all the Texas state parks and um, usually when you visit those state parks you can get a stamp and maybe buy a sticker that represent that park, but by no means I don't add any observations in that little thing, maybe a picture or a sticker, so this is 100% decorated. Uh, I also found this, if you don't want to create your own um, big setup like this, uh, you can buy something uh, ready to go and uh, my sister got me this one and it's amazing because it has here a, uh, a short illustration on how to describe uh, a plant in terms of structure all the way from the top to the root. And in the very back, also more illustrations on how to describe um, a flower. It's amazing, very educative. And even more information here with a small um, ruler that is 10 centimeters. Also different diameter size for reference. Another one with the nomenclature of the leaf, um, leaf shapes, uh, which is very nice because now you can technically correctly describe the different leaves of the plants. As for the pages, um, they leave you with one line for observations and um, on the left and on the right is just a blank page for a sketching which is the same system I had in my uh, nature journaling and a small header where you identify the date, the time, location, weather, and observations. So that actually can be the minimalist version of a nature journal. A little bit bigger, you can go for this setup, which we shared in part two. And of course, if you want extra space, you can use a B5. So this was more or less the collection and the tools uh, that I use for a nature journaling and thank you so much. Don't forget to watch part one and part two if you're interested in nature journaling. Happy journaling.